giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. All right, welcome to We the North recap with week one in the bag and me coming fresh off an event. I'm completely exhausted. When did FRC events get so long? Reporting for first updates now, I'm Parth Patel. I'm Soeb Nadim. I'm Chris. And I'm Dan. All right, so we're going to kick it off with some discussion topics here. And I just came off an, uh, an event and uh, Shoaib was there with me. So... Shoy, what do you think about null panels on the cargo ship? Versus, you know, starting with uh, with the panels open and putting some balls in there and trying to score on those. Always null hatches. Done. <laughs> <laughs> I've everything null. All null. Every, every everything null. Like there's just yeah. been so many teams um, at Durham that were just not putting up null panels, and then they wouldn't get the hatch panel or a ball in there, and there was more ball ability on that line than hatch panels. So. A little bit of interesting choices when it came to null hatch panels. Yeah, I, I'm going to agree with you there because, you know, I, I was coaching there with you. And uh, I have to admit, um, it was a little disappointing to see teams trying uh, to score those panels and then not getting them in Sandstorm. And then all of a sudden there are balls all over them. And then you get run the risk, you know, if you're if you don't have the clearance or maybe too much clearance and you end up beached on a ball. Um, mm -hmm. And I saw that I saw, you know, literally balls fall out onto the field. The team gets beached for the entire match. That's your entire match gone right there. And obviously you want to try and compete and put up as many points um, in this game as you can. So you can uh, see it really high. The scores are really close, at least from my findings, in, in a lot of matches in the qualifications, especially when no one's climbing, so then, or when everyone's climbing and, and you're even on climb. So, yeah, I would say just leave the null panels on, put the balls in, and if you really want to score uh, the hatch panels, do them on the rockets when you fill up the cargo ship, but guarantee yourself some points. Yeah, yeah. Chris, just, just, just to add on about... Um, the scores being really close. I think the average win margin on the blue line right now is 16 points. So it doesn't sound like it's the matches are that far apart. Um, and yeah, Chris, go ahead. Yeah. I mean, until, until, unless you have a really good alliance that's able to fill a rocket really quickly, I think you're going to end up seeing a whole lot of um, teams go with the, the null hatches. Unless they think they have a really awesome alliance. I think it's just, it's not worth cluttering the field and, getting potential fouls for having two game pieces at once and all that other fun stuff. Also, not to mention scoring no hatch panels on the car, or sorry, scoring hatch panels on the cargo ships a lot harder just because of those nubs that get in the way. Whereas on the rocket, you can get away with just having one side of the Velcro stick. The nubs give you five eighths, I think, either side. So, and you don't have a direct line of sight to that either. Yeah. I, I think it's pretty cut and dry here for most of us. We all agree. <laughs> yep. Right? Like, <laughs> It's yeah. just the right way to do things for now. Maybe, maybe the strategy will change, but we'll see. All right, going on. Uh, going for the rocket when cargo ship is easier. What do you guys think? I mean, I, I think the rocket's definitely, I mean, you want to go through that quickly. And, you know, I think it's, they're easier to see. And if you're just going for points and you're not trying to get the rank point, having either side to go to to kind of throw off a defense if you're getting defended against it, I think is a, uh, Definitely a thing you're going to want to try to do. Yeah, I just think doing the cargo ships just overall easier uh, doing uh, cargo on there. The rocket, the, it, the mm -hmm. inlet for the ball is actually a lot smaller. And with defense reaching high, it's a lot more difficult than just really quickly filling up a cargo ship. I mean, I think def I think if you're you know a higher level team, you probably should be going for the rocket more often than the cargo ship just because 
the cargo ship definitely is kind of like the low bar equivalent, I would say. Mm-hmm. Or sorry, not low bar, a low goal almost, where it's something that uh, a lot more accessible to more teams. So I think going for the being able to go for the rocket is usually, you know, it's what you want to achieve or what you want to have for your team. If you can't, then cargo ship is just as good. All right, I'm going to throw in my two cents here. So um, I was part of a match where my alliance got the rocket fully completed, got the ranking point for the rocket. And I'm going to tell you right now, it was not worth it. Uh, <laughs> we ended up losing the match um, and ended up only getting one RP out of it. And honestly, if we'd just gone for the cargo ship, our alliance was strong enough to likely win that matchup. Uh, probably give myself more time to climb. We probably hit our climb, um, although that time wasn't necessarily the issue with our climb in that one. But um, likely guarantee yourselves at least the three RP, and it put us in a in an awkward spot with ranking, um, having to fight for the second seed uh, as much as we did near the end of qualification matches. So definitely, I'm going to say that go for the cargo ship, guarantee yourself the points. But on the flip side, I mean, if you can solo a rocket and you guarantee yourself the win or you don't care about ranking points, Team 188 in a qualification match pretty much soloed the rocket. And they were like Mm -hmm. more of match time away from getting that ranking point. If you can do that, A, you look impressive as hell when you're trying to get picked by somebody. But B, I think you're ready to to try and compete at that level and, and try and go for the rocket only if you know you're going to win and there's no defense being thrown on you. But uh, credits to Shoheb on uh, stealing that win from me in that one. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I've got a lot of chat saying, yes, defense. But what about the defense? And I think defense is definitely going to – definitely plays a big role because it's a lot easier to defend defense against people putting on stuff on the rocket. Um, for now, it is. For now. But event- <laughs> I think eventually, you know, once the strategy and once the meta evolves, I think we're going to see a lot more teams going for the rocket because right now you know we're at week one and definitely cargo ship uh seems like you know it's the easier one more accessible but eventually to start going for that rocket because you're going to want to get more and more points uh defense is going to have to you're going to have to learn how to go against that defense yeah and maybe the defense is going to have to change a little bit as well dan so in the pre-show we were talking about teams potentially reaching the ceiling um by champs uh undefended how do we think uh, the game's going to play in eliminations? Does it ever make sense to score high in eliminations? Or does it make more sense to maybe take no hatch panels off the cargo ship? I know I said all no panels, but just to play devil's advocate here, does it make sense to take no panels off and just score low? That's 24 cycles right there. Do you think teams will be able to do that? Um, I think when it comes to eliminations, it's going to just depend on what... The comp, you know, what kind of robots the competition has, mm-hmm. because if they're if your third robot and in coming into eliminations is you know going to be a main defense team. spot, you need to have uh, or be harder for you to uh, go for the rocket because you're not because that means they're going yeah if you have a lot of defense spots coming into eliminations that means you're gonna have defense being played on you means it's gonna go it's gonna be harder to go for the rockets. Uh, and so on. So cargo ship, I think, is going to be pretty popular a lot more in eliminations uh, than qualifications. You know, once things start getting uh, a lot, once, once play starts getting a bit better. Yeah, I think I think strategy is going to have to change really quickly for defense, especially when it gets into uh, elimination bracket, because you're not trying to get that extra rank point on the rocket. So I think it's going to be vital the switch between what rocket isn't being defended against potentially. That could be a strategy around is trying to work around where the that defense spot is yeah i think something good as well is just switching between them every once in a while because if you're just going for the rocket it's going to be easy for a defense bot to just plant themselves and just wait essentially just wait for you to uh hit you for the rocket but if you're if you're changing it up then you can go for a cargo ship one time and then maybe switch over to the rocket and defense may not know what you're planning to do they may be waiting for you yeah. With regards to defense, you know, one of the things that I found uh, what really helped me personally was just the fact that we were getting defended a lot in the elimination rounds, and a lot of teams wanted to play defense on us. But a large part of our strategy was to actually draw the defense. We were like, hey, 2200 Rambotics. I mean, they were by far the best robot at this event. 
let them just have free reign and score. I love it. Um, so yeah, uh, defense and then playing defense on top of defense and, and counter defense. Uh, I'm not a big fan of defense, as you know, 610 made a post on Chief Delphi, but hey, if it's part of the game, I'll, uh, I'll be the way it needs to be played. All right, then. Well, let's uh, let's throw it to our, some event recaps. We've got two, two events to go over. Let's uh, kick it on over. Yeah, let's, let's go uh, back to Durham College. You know, I keep mentioning the event I was just at and showed was there with me. Um, let's look at exactly what transpired week one in the north, uh, starting in the true north, obviously, in Canada, um, and in uh, the Schwa, the Durham College district event. Ontario finally got to see how Destination Deep Space, presented by the Boeing Company, plays out. 40 teams gather to get off planet Primus, or is it onto Primus? I never really keep up with the story anyway. Um, this event had climbers up and down the rankings. I was not expecting to see as many level three climbers as I got to see when I got to this event. Um, it made for some interesting uh, matches in terms of ranking points. Um, it made for a really interesting time to see what teams can adapt their level three into a level two to see if uh, maximize the scoring potential of their alliance. Notable teams at this event included uh, Team 6135, which uh, I want to highlight them because they had an interesting inside frame perimeter ball pickup, which meant they could actually play defense and steal game pieces from the other side of the field, which was really unique. And Team 5885 with a super consistent climb. But what I liked about them was their hatch-only mechanism, but they were able to win as many matches as they were, uh, despite not being able to do uh, too much on the cargo end. Uh, team 2386, Team 2994... Uh, teams 5885, 4907, 4946, the Alpha Dogs, they were all there and competing hard as well and deserve uh, a mention as well. We also got to witness the first ever rocket in Ontario that got completed by teams 188 and 610, which, as the drive coach in that alliance, I have to tell you, was a bad decision. Don't get greedy for the rocket RP, you might lose a match. Wolburn took this even further, and as I mentioned earlier, solar rocket or didn't quite get the solar rocket but got pretty close uh and that was exciting to watch and as much as people say offense isn't fun to watch i think there's something exciting about watching a robot fill a rocket maybe that's just me with all of this competition it was actually team 2200 who went on to seed first overall for the first time in their team history if i'm not mistaken they would go on to pick the number two seed in team 610 and grab the defensive specialist in 4783 at the end of the snake the number one alliance would take both the quarter and semifinal matches in straight matches uh, and pay their way to the finals. Now, if you're thinking, oh, this sounds familiar, one place, two in the finals, you're dead wrong. The number seven alliance went on to beat the number two alliance in the quarterfinals and then were also not stopped by the number three alliance in the semifinals. Um, that was thanks uh, in part by some outstanding defense uh, being played by their alliance member, Team 4525, uh, but also... Alliance captain, the Waffles, uh, they went with a masterful blockading strategy, which is legal this year, by the way, um, and, and trapped Team 188 on the defensive end. And 188 was a potential level two climb on that alliance uh, and completely take that out of contention. Uh, 188 was also the only cargo scoring robot on their alliance. So just being able to shut down all scoring potential in that way was, was pretty impressive. Um, and I loved seeing that. Um, number seven alliance would then go on to face the number one alliance. <laughs> Keep in mind, the number seven alliance made it to the finals at this event with no level three climb potential. Team 4476 cannot even climb on the level two, um, or at least they didn't um, uh, yet, and they still went on to the finals. So for those of you thinking level two, level three, just know you don't have to. Um, in the end, uh, it was the number one alliance in uh, the finals in straight matches. Uh, the finals was a defensive clinic by Team 4525 and Team 4783. Um, and I have to admit, being on the receiving end of that defense, I was not happy. Cameron, if you're watching, I'm only a slight slight amount mad still. Uh, I've gotten over most of it. Congratulations to Team 2200 on the first win in seven years. This one is yours, and you did all the heavy lifting. Uh, congratulations to Team 610 and my boys on the repeat at Durham College. Team 4783 for their first blue banner, and more to come, I'm sure. Uh, shout out to Team 4525 on their silver gold uh, chairman's cling bling. Cling bling! Cling bling, and congratulations to Team 4152 Hoya Robotics on their Engineering Inspiration Award. Shohei, uh, why don't you show us what happened in Montreal? 
Yeah, moving to the northeast of the Durham College event. So my French isn't as good as Tegan, so you guys are just going to have to hear me in English. The Festival de Robotique at Montreal Regional had visiting teams 229 Division by Zero from Potsdam, New York, and their buddies from Penfield, New York, 1511 Rolling Thunder. Unlike the Durham College District event, where there was one filled rocket and almost another one soloed by Team 188, there was actually two filled rockets at the Montreal event this weekend. 3990 Tech for Kids would seed first and pick 3986 Espresso and 3985 Sonic Howl. The number three alliance captain by visiting team 229 would pick 1511 Rolling Thunder and 3550 Robotronics. The number one alliance and number three alliances would go undefeated and face off in the finals. The number one alliance would take comprehensive wins in the finals, 73 to 51 and 83 to 60, being crowned the winners of the Montreal Regional. Congratulations to Team 3986 Espresso, Team 3990 Tech for Kids, and Team 3985 Sonic Howl. This is 3990's sixth Montreal regional win and three in back to back years. So shout out to them. Congratulations to Team 4690 Electrical Mayhem, who is also visiting from New York on their first ever regional chairman's award, and 3550 Robotronics, who won the EI award as well as the safety award. Moving on from the Montreal Regional, we're going to go to the top 10, and we're going to go back to Perth's team 610. So they're repeat winners of the Durham District event, and they did it with 2200, uh, who was also at the event last year, eliminated in the semifinals. Um, the finalist team 4476, they actually played with 610 to win this event last year. So it was interesting to see them on either side of the glass this year as well as the fact that 4476, like Parth already mentioned, did it without being able to climb beyond level one, which is highly, highly impressive. Team 188, who almost saw it, scored a rocket, just one more panel to go. Uh, so shout out to them, as well as 3990. I'm going to give another shout out to them. Sixth, sixth win of the Montreal Regional and three in consecutive seasons. So huge shout out to them. Parth, how about you for the top 10? All right, so continuing on the top 10, we have Team 1747, winners at Gainesville, Team 5885, uh, Copperbot, um, or the Villanova Wildcats, 7605, rookie all-star and highest rookie seed at Montreal, Team 379, who are finalists and EI, and Team 3986, who won the Montreal Regional. Um, moving on to previews, who wants to preview events for week two? All right. Event for previews, I got two of them that I'm going to be at. So if you're there, try to find me, and I'll try to interview your face. It would be great. Um, two events in the in Duluth under the Deck Center, 123 teams total. It's going to be crazy. We've got teams actually from around the world. We've got Viking Robotics coming all the way from Sweden, and we've got a Hawaiian team. Hopefully we can bring some heat to Minnesota. That would be great. Um, but there is a forecast for some snow, so that should be interesting. Um, it's always a great event. A whole lot of things happening. Uh, two fields right next to each other. It's a whole lot of fun. Um, we also have the Indiana First Regional. Um, it has first event of the year. Um, St. Joseph's District event, and its history actually repeats itself. We should see a lot of offense with minimal defense. Teams to look out for is 46, 461, uh, 1024, and 1501. Should be a pretty good event there as well. And keeping it within Canada, uh, we've got the Humber uh, event. This is a new event this year in Ontario, and we're all excited to see Team 1114 compete. It's always an event when they're there. Uh, along with this Canadian powerhouse, you're going to see the likes of 854, 865, 907, 1310, 2935, Team Dave, uh, Makeshift Robotics, AllSpark 9, uh, 6009, and Rookie Robot 7558. I'm actually sporting their, uh, their T-shirt right now. Good luck to them. Um, yeah, so if you're at the event, come say hi. I'll be there game announcing. All right. Uh, next up, we have Miami Valley, which is an Ohio event with an interesting lack of 379 this year, which I think that might be the first year since Miami Valley has been a thing that they're not here. Uh, but either way, uh, there, are pump, there are plenty of other teams that are going to be ready to fill that gap. However, with, uh, with 144 The Rock, 4028 Beak Squad, and 302 The Dragons being the teams that probably stick out the most to me. Uh, and also keep an eye out for 5413 uh, Stellar Robotics, I believe. Yes, uh, as I've been very impressed with them in the past few years. And moving on, lastly, we have the Midwest Regional. 
coming up this weekend, which feels a little early considering it's typically a week five or six events. This means that this will be every team's first event rather than their second or third, uh, which kind of puts Midwest up in the air this year. Not every team is going to be fully tuned and have everything perfect yet. So it'll definitely be pretty interesting. Uh, speaking of up in the air, uh, we have teams flying in from all over the world with four total countries representing and five if you don't recognize New Jersey as a state. <clears throat> but of the teams competing, the reigning champs of Bomb Squad and Ponage are back again to defend their title. Ponage has won Midwest for the last three years. However, are some amazing teams like 111 Wild Stang, 2062 Core, 2338 Gear It Forward, uh, 1736 Robot Casserole, 1675 UPS, and 48 Team Elite. If I wanted to list every great team at the event, I'd literally have to list all of them. So seriously, make sure to check out the Midwest Regional this weekend. And watch out for some heavy defense uh, from teams such as 4096, uh, Control Z, 5120 Horizon, 5847 uh, Ironclad, and 3061, uh, uh, I'm blanking on their name now, <laughs> There's Husky, Husky Robotics. Because this game is defense heavy, and those guys know how to play some defense. Tyler, you have a couple of comments? Yeah, just a note. Uh, actually, I will be there uh, at the Midwest Regional on Saturday do some filming. So if uh, I'd love to stop by and talk to some of your teams as well. So uh, both my wife and myself will be there uh, from a media perspective, and we'll be doing some uh, behind-the-bumpers uh, scenes uh, at the Midwest Regional. So keep an eye out for the big guy with the spinny hat. Uh, and then we just want to issue a quick uh, correction uh, real quick from the Montreal event. Yeah, so from the Montreal event, it seems I got my teams mixed up. So it was actually 50... 865 that was picked and that's droid and they're from turbo in quebec so just a shout out to them for being finalists at the event this translation error or something French. somewhere in there yeah yeah all right everybody thank you for tuning in to we the north recap we hope to see some of you guys out at uh, the events that we've all mentioned that we're going to be at uh, come say hi we're all friendly people for the most part um and we'd love to shove a camera in your face maybe a microphone too um, if you love what we do and you love talking robots, and of course you do, um, keep following us, keep watching us. Uh, and if you've got a few bucks to donate, help support what we do. Uh, that would be wonderful. And if you don't, that's great too. Just on behalf of myself, Shohei, Dan, um, and Chris, we'd like to thank you and our producer, Tyler, of course. Um, and next we're going to be going on to the West coast, best of the West. So long everybody. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers, keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.